Hello people, this is Phil. In this video we're going to learn how to create a print function to print strings and we're going to learn how to include files in our assembly code. So if you remember last time we had a phasm1.asm file and what we're going to do is we're going to copy it to phasm2.asm. So now we've got phasm2. Let's open it up. And now we have a copy of our original file. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function called print. And this function will print out a string. And the first thing that we want to do is actually call our string length function to get the string length. Then what we want to do is move Let's see, RDX to RAX, actually. And this allows us to move our uh, move our string length to our to our DX. Then we want to move RSI or RDI to RSI. Whoops, 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 to RSI. There we go. Then, let's see, we want to move. Oh yeah, we want to move RDI, one into RDI. This will tell us that we want to do a, um, uh, standard out. Then we'll move one into RAX to say that we want to do a system write. Then we want to return. And that's our print function. Now let's go use it. What we'll do is we'll remove stream length. Actually, we don't need any of this anymore. Um, Oh, actually, I forgot. We need a syscall. So that way we actually print the string. Then let's use our new function. We'll call print. All right. Let's try this out. Okay. All right, it seemed to print out our stream. Let's try another stream uh, just for the heck of it. Let's create another stream. We'll do message two. We'll declare some bytes and we'll go this is, is my other stream. And we'll give it a new line, and we'll give it a zero. Oh, actually, let's print out that string. So let's print out two strings. Let's call, let's load the effective address into RDI of our message two. Address of message two goes into RDI. Then we'll call our print function. And we'll do, we have to compile it, then run it. And it prints out both our strings. So now if we look at our program, we see that as we add these functions, it's going to get pretty long. And what we would like to do is write all our functions or separate our functions out into different files that make sense and then include them in this file so that way we can keep our, our main function uh, nice and short. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to include a file on our system. And so the first thing that we're going to do is count these lines. So we've got 43. Uh, so actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So we want to get the last 28 lines. So we'll do tail, uh, 28 lines, and we'll get it a phasm 2. And what we'll do is pipe those lines into io.include. So that'll give us a new io.inc. And that's our new io.inc file. And what we'll do here is delete these bottom lines since we don't need them. And we'll go back to our phasm2 file. And now what we can do is we can delete all these lines that we don't need anymore. Then at the top, we'll include uh, our io.inc file. Actually, I think we include it as a string. Phasm, phasm2. And then we'll do phasm2. And it works. And so that was pretty easy. So we learned how to include a file. So now we can separate our functions out into different files that make sense. And we also know how to create a print function. Pretty neat. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.